crowd. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. We're back down here with my friend Doug at Superformance. Now please, don't go away. I want you to stick around for this one because there's a good chance we're all in the same boat on this. So what we're shooting is a Cobra. Superformance Mark III Roadster. It's a Tesla P100D motor. Do you need a defibrillator or a, a We can plug it into the car. Salt? Yeah, we can plug <laughs> you into the car and hook you up. Yeah. So it's a Tesla P100D. I know you're shocked. But yes. you're amped to drive it, right? It's a P100D motor, it's 4,500 foot-pounds of torque. When they initially did the engineering on this, the guys at GoTech Performance in Florida who did all the engineering, this is our, our first prototype car, they had it at 2,500 foot-pounds and it was undrivable. So cranked it down to 1,500 foot-pounds, which equates to about 650 horsepower if you're trying to relate to horsepower, but 1,500 foot-pounds of torque from zero RPM. And when the rear tires break loose, it just goes to max RPM, which is 18,000 RPM. 18,000 And RPM just roasts the tires. Well, but at 1,500 foot-pounds, and you'll find out, it's very easy to drive it nice and cruise, mm -hmm. but the minute you start to roll into it, it turns into an otherworldly beast of yeah. a car. I'm really excited to drive it. I'm also a little nervous and you're nervous. I'm in the passenger seat. Yeah, I'm not yeah, a good yeah. passenger. You should be nervous. And I know what happened the last time you drove an electric vehicle. With the batteries up front, the motor in the back, it has a 4951 weight distribution. Even though it's only rear wheel drive, it's got tremendous grip right up until it doesn't. And once it does spin, guys that have a lot of seat time in this car say you can modulate the wheel spin, but you've really got to get a feel for the car to be able to do that. Yeah. Because really, once they break loose, it really wants to just go to 18,000 RPM. Holy crap. Okay, so usually here we would see like a Roush 427 or something of that or nature. Or a Shelby FE motor. Mm -hmm. We see gigantic cell phone batteries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You could uh, you call Uranus with this one. Business up front, party in the back. Yeah, it's a yeah, mullet yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. This is actually a motor. It's a motor, it's not an this engine. This is not an engine. It's kind of funny, it looks It looks a bit like uh, it's an airbagged car and that's the right, pressure the tank. tank. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The other cool thing is Tesla engraves the QR code on the motor, mm -hmm. so you can actually scan that with your cell phone and we'll come up and tell you the model and specs on the motor. Yeah, it was really nice the way the guys at GoTech did this. Uh, putting the clear panel in here so you could show off the drivetrain. It is actually, pa I mean, as much as I, like anyone watching right now, having a hard time with it, right? But I gotta admit, packaged really nicely. It looks, it's typical of Superformance. They really did a beautiful job, and the it car's laid great. out great for it, because with the batteries up front and this in the back, like I said, you got great weight distribution. Mm -hmm. And speaking of practical mm -hmm. and usable, so on the prototype, We've only got about 90 to 100 miles of range, but on the production cars, we'll have upwards of 150, 160 miles of range. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be great. It's going to make it a really nice usable car. Yeah. And you can choose from a wide variety of power options. You can use a lot of different electric motors. You can use a Model 3. This oh. is way over spec for the car. So you could scale down yeah. the motor a bit. So yeah. there's ways you can customize it. We're taking orders for them now. We're out in 2023 really? for build slots because you know cars are selling so like crazy. Yeah. What's the weight difference from this car versus, say, a, a 427 small block. Yeah, this is what really surprises people. A typical small block Cobra, like iron block aluminum head, mm -hmm. Roush 427 type car, mm -hmm. would weigh around 2550. This is about 100 pounds lighter. Oh, really? Yeah, 100 pounds lighter. By the way, is the car running right now? No, <laughs> it could be, though. It was the strangest thing to me to be in a Cobra that's moving and not making noise. Yeah. It was just, even though I'm yeah. used to that in other cars, yeah. in a Cobra, it was the weirdest thing ever. 100%. But after driving it, I actually coined a catchphrase for this, like, you know, with the Mark III electric Cobra, you don't get it until you get in it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of the people that are gonna be posting comments about how wrong this is, how Carol Shelby's turning over in his grave, mm -hmm. all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, you really have to get in the car and feel this, even if yeah. you don't wanna own one. Yeah. It is such a cool experience to be yeah. in this and feel the amount of acceleration this has. It's almost to the point of 
not being able to control the car just because your senses are overloaded by the acceleration and you literally like lose peripheral vision. You get tunnel vision in this thing when you hit it hard, you'll find out. As far as interior goes now, it's, it's so it's still like very traditional Shelby interior. Yep, gauge layout's the same, although we have electronic gauges that are repurposed to show battery levels, mm -hmm. battery temperature, things like that. And then you have a custom center console, which has your control panel. That gives you information on the state of the battery. It's got a lot of info in there on the car and how mm -hmm. it's doing. And then also on the far left-hand side, it has drive, neutral, and reverse. When I get in, I find out my, my left foot's looking for a clutch pedal and there's not one in it. And that's another just weird, weird thing. weird, huh? So uh, a lot of people that have been driving this car will left foot brake just to give their left foot something to do. Something you said before though, that, that I think is a good one for all you guys to take into consideration is it's another way of hot rodding. Yeah, you I know, mean, Carroll Shelby hot rodded the AC mm -hmm. car when he put the V8 in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he did a swap, a motor swap. I think it's time to stop looking and get cooking with this baby. Boom, boom, Let's do boom. it. Here we go. This is so weird, dude. So I guess I am, you're right. I want to do something with my left foot, so I'm going to yeah. left foot brake it. Yeah. It's always good to have the other foot cover and the brake at all times anyway. I'd imagine <laughs> in this thing, yeah. And you're being very gentle with the throttle right now. You know I am, dude, but I'm just cautious in how I approach driving any car. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> cool. It's definitely a different experience of a Cobra, I gotta admit, man. It's dramatically different. But it does, like you said, it gives you a bit more sense of the chassis, the the steering. Uh, this car definitely has a learning curve, and you are coming down the learning curve fast. Wow. Woo! And what's bizarre with this is like this, right? Just barely moving. Right now, I feel like I'm in a cobra-shaped golf cart. Yeah, but then you put your foot down, you realize, okay, we're not in a golf cart. No. You just breathe on that pedal and you're at 100. It's, it's crazy how quickly you are. And you know you've, you've, you've spent time in this. You know I'm being very light on throttle input. I mean, I just hit, I was watching the tack this time. I just hit 12,000 RPMs. Yeah, right now with the direct drive, you know, it, it's a legit 150 mile an hour car. Is it and really? And you'll get zero to 150 really fast. Have you guys ever done any tests with this as far as like zero to 60 quarter mile? Not yet. You haven't done any Not yet. yet, okay. My guess, based on my feel, the right driver in the car, you could probably do zero to 60 in about two six, two five, two six. Have you guys ever talked about doing an all wheel drive version? Funny you should mention that. <laughs> Not for the Mark III, but we do have a Daytona Coupe that's a dual motor all wheel drive in development right now. Got and it. that car will be a monster. Oh look, there's a relative. Come on, want to race? I can, hang. <laughs> I can hang with you, buddy. Oh, you could toast him. I could smoke him. You're so much lighter than he is. I love that Lance is, I love that he's visionary enough to consider and then go through the time, energy, money to develop this. Cause he it's, knows it's, there's gonna be a market for there it. There is. Whatever, and God forbid you know. we ever live in a world that outlaws internal combustion engines. But if that does happen, at least you still have something cool to drive. Right. Holy shit. Jesus, man. <laughs> God dang. Brutal acceleration. <laughs> I love how much brake there is though, man. Yeah, yeah. Willwood power disc brakes, yeah. four piston front, two piston rear. Yeah. And you don't really need to upgrade the brakes. They're over spec for the standard Mark III anyway, so they work really well with this car. Yeah. And when you combine it with all the regen, it's more than enough. You know. I want you to get on it though. Don't be, I mean, I be know, respectful, I, I am, but I'm don't working, be scared. I'm working my way into it, dude, but I'm, I am definitely approaching it cautiously, bro. It just kind of Don't get me wrong. I don't want to die, but, um, you know, I want you to see what this thing can really do. Yeah. Oh.
This also shows how really good the Superformance Mark III chassis is, because you're putting 1,500 foot-pounds of torque in this chassis. Yeah. Oh, God. That is like warp speed. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't keep watching this Cobra fly by without any noise. <laughs> so you're going to launch this bitch or what? I believe so. Hit it. God damn. Woo! Oh, that guy in that Prius was probably puckering his butt. Making sure his will was signed up. You got bigger balls than I ever will have, man. You stayed on it so long. Oh I think God. we're done. No, 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 we're no, done. No, we're no, done. no, no, no more of that. Well, this thing's definitely been a freak show. Gotta admit, it's, you know, just being honest with you guys, it's not for me, I'm not an electric technology guy. I'm a Cobra guy, man, I like the rumbling noise. And speaking of rumbling noises, my buddy Dave, who's been with us through this whole shoot, you guys might remember Dave. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> so as I was just saying to you guys how much I'm not necessarily this electric technology guy, although I appreciate the technology, I appreciate the torque. I'm definitely a combustion loud motor smells and electric. All that. Number one, you wouldn't go for a ride in it. No, 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 no. I I'd take a piss in it or something like that. <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of American tragedies, yeah. you know, over, over history, like the Vietnam War, sure. and then you, you, Afghanistan, you know, all these terrible wars, and then 9-11, sure. all these horrible things, sure. and now Biden. the electric cobra, the last tragedy in U.S. This history. Kills you, this is it? This is just... You, you truly do hate this. This brings tears to my eyes, as <laughs> I'm so sad. It's one of the saddest days of my life. <laughs> oh, and the shifter, that's a really nice shift. Oh, it doesn't have one. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I mean, it's beautifully done, no question. <laughs> but what a pile of love. shit. Now, yeah. talk amongst yourselves. I look forward to, the, like, genuinely look forward to the reading the comments on this one. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. Later.